What is going on guys? Snickle here and today I have another trophy talk for you. This is going to be for the week of November 1st, 2020 and it's been quite an interesting week and we are getting into the next or the next few weeks you're going to be getting into the PlayStation 5. So I'll talk about all that stuff um, coming up. But anyway, let us uh, take a look at what I have been playing this week. So starting off, um, a majority of my time has gone into or was going into Ghost of Tsushima. Um, I don't remember where I was exactly last week, but I basically finished ep everything in legend Legends mode other than doing the raid, which we plan on doing this weekend. And then I was also able to run through New Game Plus. It took me about um, a day and a half or so to get through really only like four to maybe less than that, maybe like six hours. No, not less than that. What am I saying? Probably like four to six hours to get through the main game. Um, on New Game Plus, so it was pretty enjoyable. It was nice to play back through, but finish that up. Um, and like I said, we're gonna try to do the raids this weekend, which will get me the one hundred percent back in Ghost of Tsushima. So that's pretty cool to uh to get done. Um, then up next we have <laughs> Lego The Incredibles. Um, I did not put this on my list. Um, so I have two PS4s. One of them is the one that I play on. PS, it's a PS4 Pro. My other PS4 is my, you know, original one that I have that's down in the living room or family room or whatever. Um, and someone decided that they wanted to play uh, Lego The Incredibles on it, or at least sign in my account and play on it. So with that being said, um, this happened back in the day with uh, Lego. <sighs> Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, it was Lego Star Wars. I I originally was not going to play Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens, but someone accidentally played it on my account and got a trophy, and then um, now that's happened again on Lego The Incredibles. Like I said, it, it's just my PS4 that's downstairs. Um, there's, like, another account that's, like, the main account on it, and then mine is just a secondary because my sister uses my account for Plus sometimes. So um, someone just signed on my account and got it. it it's really annoying, but... I was going to play the game, but not, not now. So, um, I don't know when I'll get to it. It probably won't be for, you know, a few weeks or months, but we'll wait and see. It should only take me a few days to play, but, um, it is what it is. Then up next, we have Tomb Raider on the PS3. Uh, this is a game, another game that I put a lot of time into. I was just finishing up doing the level 60 grind and buying all the upgrades and uh, characters in multiplayer. So we got that done. That was really nice. So the multiplayer for Tomb Raider on the PS3 is done. Now I need to do it for the PS4. When I'll do that, I'm not really sure, but um, it is it is done on the PS3. Um, It's a janky game, I think. Um, To be fair, all the Tomb Raider games are kind of janky. They play a little weird and kind of like their own types of games, which is good. That's good. There's nothing wrong with that, but I do think that it is, I don't know, it just plays a little strange, and uh, it can definitely be hard to go back and play PS3 games when, you know, the PS4 <laughs> looks so good, and it's going to be with the PS5, it's going to look even better, so it's going to be harder and harder to go back and play PS3 games, but I will uh, I will always enjoy the PS3. Um, I did write a multiplayer trophy guide for this game, so hopefully that'll be coming out Within the next few weeks, I'm not really sure. I have a few multiplayer trophy guides written that I need to do um, along with how to platinums. So hopefully those will come out in the next few weeks, months. Who knows? Then up next, um, there is uh, Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition. So I did end up finishing this up. If you guys don't know, Katz and I did all the multiplayer for this, and then we played through and did all the co-op and finished that up. We basically played through the whole game co-op because... Um, it's just more enjoyable to play co-op. Plus, if you die, you can actually respawn, unlike in the single player, where if you die, you can respawn, but it just, you know, uh, turns back time, if that makes sense. So, um, all I had to do to finish this up was to just do Duke's Mighty Foot. So, um, I will have a video coming out on this in the next few days, so keep an eye out for that. But Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition is done. The delisted Duke Nukem. Um, then up next on the PS4, I, so I was putting most of my time into Ghost of Tsushima when I wasn't really playing Ghost of Tsushima. Um, I have been putting all of my other time into Car X Drift Racing, sorry, Car X Drift Racing Online. I, um, 
basically just have to AFK this game to get a majority of it. So right now what I'm working on is just to get maximum level, which is literally just to AFK. Um, you just make a online session and you drift in a circle and you gain drift points and then you level up. So I've been doing that. I reached rank 25 um, yesterday. So max rank is 30, but I believe it's another like 5 million XP or something to get to 30. And I'm only at like 1.5 million. So that's pretty cool. It's going to take a little bit of time, but um, I'm going to go through that. And then I'll probably try to work towards the 1000 multiplayer races, even though that might sound pretty bad. It's really not that bad because going for the 1000 races, I can also go for these other random trophies that I'll have to do like clipping zones and uh, clipping points and backwards and, you know, masterful race. And, you know, all I'll have to do all of these or I can go for all these while I'm doing um, multiplayer races. Um, I do want to make note that if anyone is interested in doing the game, there is one trophy that needs to be earned online, that being nothing personal. So if someone's interested and wants to do it, do let me know because I would, uh, wouldn't mind getting that trophy knocked out. And last but not least, we have Hitman Blood Money. This is a new game. So a few months back, I started this thing of doing or of, um, alternating game franchises and the franchises that I was alternating at the time were Hitman and Star Wars and I was doing them I, I think I did I don't really know what I did I think I may have done one loop of it and then I kind of took a step back and started playing a bunch of other games and now I'm back to it so I am going to be I'm going to be doing Hitman Blood Money and then I'll be doing a Star Wars game um, and then you know obviously throwing Lego Lego Incredibles in there um, I am going to be making like trophy guides and stuff for Hitman Blood Money. I did not do that for Hitman Contracts just because I don't know if that game had the same trophy list. Um, let's take a look. Um, it did. The five professional silent assassins, but it's fine. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be making trophy guides on Hitman Blood Money. Um, so, you know, I I'll be doing that. Um, but yeah, I'll be alternating Hitman and Star Wars again, throwing in Lego The Incredibles um, here and there. But um, anyway, let's transition into what I have or what I plan on playing in the upcoming week. So my main goal in the upcoming week is I am going to be playing Hitman Blood Money probably a lot of the time, um, if not all of the time off stream and on stream if I do stream. Um, I'll probably be AFKing Car X Drift Racing as much as possible. I don't want to do it like 24-7, but definitely as much as possible. Um, and then coming out next Tuesday is um, actually um, Assassin's Creed Val Valhalla. Valhalla, Valhalla, I guess we'll, we'll say it. <laughs> um, I'm trying to get some confirmation from Ubisoft. Uh, I've been contacting a few people in regards to if the game will have multiple trophy lists on the PS3 and the, or the PS4 and the PS5, that's really weird to say. If it'll have mo multiple trophy lists on the PS4 and PS5, because I did pre-order the game on the PS4, um, but if it's going to be the same trophy list, I don't want to play it on the PS4 and then you know you know move the save over to the PS5 and play it on the PS5 because I feel like that's just a little bit annoying. So I am trying to get some confirmation there because if there are two trophy lists, you know I, I'll obviously play the game twice, but I just want to know kind of what's going on. Um, another game that that happened with is Watch Dogs Legion, where I have it on the PS4, but is it worth playing on the PS4 if there's going to be, um, if there's going to be, you know, games or, or a trophy list on the PS5, or if there isn't going to be a trophy list on the PS5, is it worth playing it on the PS4 or just waiting until the PS5 comes out and doing that? So I'm trying to get a little bit of confirmation because between the PS3 and PS4, they they did do separate trophy lists in regards to games like Watch Dogs, Far, um, Far Cry 4, Assassin's Creed 4, a lot of Ubisoft games that were released kind of in the middle of the uh, cycle, the console cycle or uh, console generation cycle, I guess that's what you would call it. Um, they did have multiple trophy lists. Part of me is thinking that they're going to be leaning that way because I believe, um, you know, Watch Dogs Legion already came out, but you're not going to be able to play it, uh, the PS5 version day one on the PS5 and plus with it having multiple releases that in like a ps5 specific release it also makes me think that it will have a separate trophy list um but it may not i i could be um uh, i could be mistaken so i'm trying to get a little bit of clarity there because i do want to play assassin's creed valhalla next week but again i don't want to have to i don't want to play it and then um 
kind of there not be another trophy list and then not play it again. Because if you guys know, for Assassin's Creed at least, and a lot of other games, I've been looking into doing like basically every single game um, possible, like every stack of it and everything, especially Assassin's Creed because it's like my favorite franchise. So if I have to play Assassin's Creed Valhalla twice, one on the, once on the PS3, PS, PS4, and once on the PS5, then I think I would be perfectly okay with that. So hold on. I'm going to get a quick drink. Um, but that's a little thing that I'm just trying to figure out. Um, but in regards to what I'm going to be playing again in the upcoming week, most of my time is going to be going to Hitman Blood Money with a little bit of time going to Car Drift Racing Online. That'll be AFK in the background because I could do that on the PS4 while obviously playing games on the PS3. And then, like I said, finishing up Ghost of Tsushima this weekend would be great. There are also going to be some random PS3 games that will be coming up in the next few weeks that Katz and I are going to be playing, trying to get the multiplayer done, just like in Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition. There's games like Bioshock 2, Grid Autosport, a bunch of random games kind of on the PS3 that may be coming up and and that I will be, uh, or that will be getting the online uh, trophies done with. So um, now I want to... Um, I want to pull up the comments from last week. So let me pull those up. If you guys do have any um, questions, comments, or anything that you want me to answer in the next week's trophy talk, you can leave those down in the comments below. And I will kind of use those as um, discussion points, more or less, as we, uh, if I can find it. Um, oh, the other thing that I do want to note, there's there's a few other things I want to note before we get into these discussion points. So in regards to server shutdowns, Mad Max did shut down officially on October 31st, which was Saturday, I believe. People were saying that they were earning scrap for a few days, but now it's kind of been confirmed that the scrap doesn't work. With that being said, those two challenges, a penny saved in dividend will probably, you're not going to be able to do them. So, and WB isn't going to take them out of the game or Avalanche isn't going to take them out of the game with an update. So with that being said, I think Mad Max is going to, or is sadly unobtainable. If I don't know if you would say it's sad, but um, the other news that I would like to, uh, or that I want to talk on is another WB game that is going to be going down at the end of the year. That being um, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. Uh, I don't know if it's going down in Shadow of War as well, but Middle-Earth Shadow of Mordor, the Nemesis system is going to be shut off, which means that the Vendetta missions are going to be unobtainable. So um, if you want to and you haven't already, I would definitely highly suggest to play Middle-Earth Shadow of Mordor. At least get the Vendetta mission. You can get it pretty early in the game and uh, and get that just so you don't have another unobtainable I don't know what's going on with WB games right now, but they're literally shutting all their servers down on the PS4, which doesn't make sense because the PS5 isn't even out yet, and they're shutting servers down on the PS4. So, um, oh, I guess another thing we can talk about real quick before I get into these is the PS5. So what's going to be going on with me and the PS5? Um, long story short, I wasn't, I, I think I've talked about this before, but long story short, I was not able to get a pre-order for the PS5. So with that being said, I won't be getting the PS5 day one, but I'm going to be keeping my eye out in, you know, online or, you know, stores I go to. And if I can get one, I'm going to get one, but I'm not going to like stand in a five hour line to get one. So it'll, it'll kind of just happen when it happens. Um, all right. So let's get into a few of the topics here. We only have about, you know, six of them here, seven. So, um, the first one I want to start with is, uh, Erica, I still, I still don't know how to pronounce this. I'm so sorry. Um, you said, thank you for responding to your comment. Wasn't trying to call you out or expose you. People are entitled to play what they want. I didn't know about the whole, my name is Mayo meme going on at the time. I've had a PS3 since 2007, but only started going back to get trophies and games for like the past two years. Yeah, no, no problem at all. I'm not, I, I'm not mad or I'm not saying, I'm not like saying, Oh, you, you exposed me. No, I mean, it is what it is. Um, I'm, I'm not mad about it. Um, but typically for me, there's always like a, there's always a meaning behind why I play a game more or less, especially if it's a really easy game like that. Like I personally don't play games, you know, specifically for trophies 
some games I will play, and I, I mean, I obviously enjoy earning trophies, but I wouldn't play, wouldn't buy a game and play it just for the trophies, if that makes sense. So that's why I don't really like Ratalika games, and I don't really like those easy peasy games. But if you notice that I play them, there's typically some sort of like meaning behind it, if that makes sense. I wouldn't have a problem with the easy peasy games if they didn't have stacks. I mean, that's just, that's just a long story short there, but. No, I, I'm not. I, I'm not saying you were exposing it. It's all good. It's all good. Um, I have two comments here from Christopher Thornton, but one of them is at the top and one of them is at the bottom. So I'm just going to do it that way. Um, so I'll do the top one first. Um, so first question, have you ever had any ne negative experiences trophy hunting? The only reason I ask is because I was working on ghost sniper ghost warrior and had five people disband me once they had popped their trophies. So you ended up having to repeat the process with another set of players and then had to stick around when you needed the 100 kills and it set you back over a week. This is the first bad experience you've had um, or first bad experience in years you've had trophy hunting. And then you said, thank you for responding to your question you asked in the last trophy talk. No problem. I, lo I, love, I love these um, topics and these comments. So have I had any bad experiences um trophy honey? I'm 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 going to assume you mean in regards to online games. I'm scrolling down to the bottom of my list right now cuz I do want to just go through. I'm assuming that you're saying or you're you're more saying for online games has there ever been a bad experience? Um so off the top of my head, I am going to scroll through my list for like a second but off the top of my head, I can't say that there are any games specifically that I had a bad experience with, mainly because I didn't really do big boosting games um, back when I started trophy hunting. I didn't really start doing big boosting games till probably around 2017. Um, but we can go through my list and, and I can kind of just, I'll try to figure out or, or see if I can refresh my memory. So you're probably wondering about Brotherhood. I actually did Brotherhood 100% legit, so I didn't have to boost any of that at all. Um, that was an easy boost with some guy. I don't even remember getting the online trophies in Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, if you want me to be completely honest. Um, I don't remember Air Conflict Secret Wars being a pain. Um, I didn't have to boost Dirt 3 or Revelations or AC3. I can't really say... Uh, none of these games are really coming off as being bad boosts to me. In in the case of what you're saying where people left you. Um, just scrolling through to see if I can jog my memory a little bit. Um... So I, I, this is really stupid, but I did have a bad experience, not like really bad, but it was just communication for Anarchy Rush Hour. I found a guy to do this back in like probably 2016, and I literally would message him like every week, every other week, trying to do it, and he would never respond and never respond and never respond. And eventually he responded one time, and that's when we did it. So that was a little bit of a pain. I don't remember having any bad experiences with Need for Speed Undercover, but the game was so goddamn old when I did it that it was kind of a pain in the ass. Um, all right, so then this is when I got into, like, actually, like, I had, like, a solid group of people to boost games. Um, Battlefield 1943 had an interesting experience, not really with boosting, just playing the game. So there's a trophy in this game for, um, I think it's for getting... Be the best squad on all three maps. I think it was that one, best squad. Kill a player, fly a plane, kill one of it, a parachute, win a match, play 30, but cap 25. Yeah, so this best squad one, um, I actually played with someone who like glitched under the map. <laughs> so yeah, that was interesting. But I didn't really boost it. Like, I was honestly playing Battlefield 1943 in 2018 for fun. I mean, I was doing it for the trophies, but, like, I wasn't, like, trying to set anything up. I was just playing for fun. Um, 
an interesting experience with Rogue Warrior is I did only the online and somehow I popped a, a single player trophy. Um, I popped two single player trophies by just doing the online. So d uh, don't question that. I don't know what the fuck. I don't know how that happens. Um, the my kill zone two. So <sighs> my experience with kill zone two was quite interesting. Um. So basically, I went for kill zone two when the servers were going to be shut down. When they said the servers were going to shut down, right? And I I had someone message me, and he was like, "Hey, I want to do kill zone two. Are you interested in doing it?" And I was like, "Yeah, I really don't know too much, but like this is infamously known as being like a shit, like a really hard multiplayer. And I know that it has something to do with being in like the top one percent. So with everybody playing the game now and trying to get it, I think that that's going to be like nearly impossible to do. So I waited, I waited, I waited, and eventually I was like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. So we hopped on, and we we spent probably a day or two during the week, like during a week of going for it, trying to figure out how to how to at least do the XP grinding. And we did it, and we did it, and we did it. And um, I would say we put a decent amount of time in, and I tried. We both, me and this guy, both tried to get it. And you can see right here, on January 21st, 2018, I was able to get a uh, Valor Cross, Valor Medal, and Valor Citation, which is to achieve rank number one, two, and three, but I did not get Valor Grand Cross, which is to be in the top 1%, so I had to play a whole nother week and do a whole full week of that grinding to get Valor Grand Cross, so that one was kind of interesting. That was just like a learning experience, and there were so many people that were trying to get that trophy at the time that it was absolutely ridiculous, but... Yeah, that was interesting. I wouldn't say that that was negative, but it was definitely an interesting experience. But I mean, I guess I guess long story short and, you know, to answer your question, I don't think I've ever had a negative experience where people have kind of left me behind in playing a game because for the most for the most part and most of the times I'm I usually pick the people I play with and typically I I play with the same group of people. Because I know that they're trustworthy and I know that they're good boosters and I know that they want to get the game done just like I want to get the game done. So typically I won't expand outside of that box unless it's a game that nobody wants to play, um, which then I'll find people on PSN profiles and try to get it to play. But the last time that happened when I was trying to do Enemy Front, um, it turned negative and the guy was... He, he joined the session, and, and every time I do a session, I set it for a time. And in the description, I always say, we will play at this time, but dates may vary or something along those lines. And people always join, and I always ask their availability, and they're on a completely different time zone. And I'm like, dude, did you even read the description of this boost? Like, you literally joined it. You don't know what the fuck is going on, and now you're pissed off because we're all available and you're not. And he ended up leaving. Um, but it's just like, it's annoying. Like, can you read? It's not that hard to read, honestly. Um, and then another game is Twisted Metal. That was another shit show because everyone was going for it. So with Twisted Metal, what was annoying was um, when you got into, when you made a lobby, right? So you needed six people to start a game. When when you would make a lobby um, and with part of those six people were, you, you could use split screen. So you only needed three PS3s to do it. So when you made a lobby, you had to make sure your two other PS3s were ready to join immediately. And then the second that the game started, nobody could join mid-match, which was really nice because you could play, no one would join. Typically, if you were playing and someone joined, if there because there was a few trolls going around, they would they would leave immediately. So it wasn't really the end of the world. Um, but there were people that would just sit in your lobby and you would be searching and then you would, you know, they would join, you would leave, you'd make a new lobby with a whole new name. They would join you. So you kind of had to put the game down for a few hours and then come back. So that was a little bit of annoying or of an annoyance when playing the game, but you know, it wasn't too bad. Push through that. But yeah, I would probably say the my recent encounter with, with someone through enemy front was definitely the most annoying just because... The guy didn't read the message. We we didn't even get into the game and we didn't even start boosting. It was just the communication prior to that. So I was like, dude, if your communication is that bad, I don't even know if I want to play the game with you. So.
But no, I don't think I've ever been left behind. If I was ever left behind, the wheel that the, the way that I would deal with that situation is if I did it through PSN profiles, I would obviously you can rate people on boosting sessions. It's a little petty, but you can do that. And then I would I would probably honestly message them every fucking day to piss them off. And I, I would wait for them to block me or something. But that's what I would do. Um, I'll get to your other question later on, Christopher. It'll be the last one that I that I end with. Um, next up we have Titan God Gaming. How do you feel about people uh, paying other people to do trophies on their accounts for them? Don't like it. Your account is supposed to be a reflection of the games that you play and that and things that you're capable of doing, right? That's the whole point of your account. If you physically cannot do something, then you shouldn't be playing the game. For instance, let's say you physically can't play, and I'm not saying you Titan game, I'm just saying, you know, people Titan God gaming. I'm saying just people in general. Let's say you physically can't play Gran Turismo 5. Let's say you do the multiplayer and everything, but you physically cannot do the Vettel challenges. You physically cannot beat those challenges. You don't deserve the platinum. If you if you can't do them, then you don't deserve the platinum. Um, and that's just for any other thing. I know that there's gaming services where people will literally get platinums for you, which I think is a little ridiculous. Um, they'll play games and earn platinums for you. Pay them to play a game to put on your account like that. This, that doesn't make sense to me at all. I, I just think personally, your account is a reflection of games that you play and things that you're able to achieve. Rhythm based games, guitar hero games, rock band games. If you physically can't play those games on those harder difficulties and you can't earn those trophies, then you don't deserve them. Um, and if you're paying people to do it, I just I just don't think that that's the right thing to do. Um, which I mean that kind of gets into like boosting, like th that's what people will say about boosting. You know, like you didn't legitimately earn your trophies when you were when you were boosting multiplayer. So do you deserve them? I mean, you could be right, but it's not like I'm booting up Call of Duty Warzone and I'm trying to level boost some bullshit for you know I'm playing games like we're playing games like Tomb Raider on the PS3. And Far Cry 2 on the PS, like who the fuck, no one's playing these games. So there's, there's physically no way for you to, to get the trophies without having to boost them. Sorry, I went on a tangent there of boosting because I know that there's, that's a topic that people talk about is, you know, boosting is the same as, you know, cheating or anything like that because you're manipulating the game to get your trophies easier and you're not doing it legitimate. Oh, okay. But no, I, I do not, uh, I, I, I do not agree with people buying trophies um or paying people to do trophies on their account I, I don't agree with that not a fan um up next we have hannibal 9090 hi snickle awesome and great content and helpful trophy guides my question to you do you play games that you know the platinum is unobtainable and gather up the trophies you can and move on I'm asking because I have some games on my PSN with unobtainable trophies, but as I decided to get what I can and just push it up to an A rank. So this is actually a great point. I've been thinking about, or this is a great topic. Thank you for that, Hannibal. So I, I've actually been thinking about this recently. Um, well, not recently. I've been thinking about it, you know, a few months ago, and I actually did it a few years ago for a game. Um, but, a, but a franchise that I really want to play, but I just know that I can't earn any of the trophies is... It's going to sound kind of weird, but... It's this franchise right here, Tiger Woods PGA Tour. So I'm a huge golf fan and I love all of these games. Now I have Tiger Woods PGA Tour 10 on my list and Tiger Woods PGA Tour 14 on my list. I can't earn the platinum in either one of those, but would I ever, oh, I also have Tiger Woods 13 on my list apparently too. I didn't know that. Um, but would I ever play these games like the story modes and stuff to play through and just get them high as high of a percentage as possible like you said Hannibal and get it up to an A rank yeah I mean I would 100% do that it would help your completion percentage out even though you know that's just a number and I don't think that's a huge thing to live by but I mean I think if you enjoy the game and you do everything except what's unobtainable I, I really don't think there's a problem with that I think people people right now when it comes to the trophy community and people in general they are so fixated on having like a perfect 100% account that it's almost too stressful to play games. Like it's not a hobby anymore. 
So if you want to play a game and you want to earn trophies in it and you want to show people, because again, that's the whole point of your account is to show people what you've done and everything. And you want to show people that you've played this game and you've done all this. I don't see a problem with that. Even though you're not going to get the platinum at the end of the day, I really don't think that it's a bad thing because it is what it is. And guess what? Every game one day is going to be unobtainable because the servers will shut down at some point. So um, I, I don't think it's a, I, I really don't think it's a bad thing. And if you want me to be completely honest, I really like the idea of it because I feel like it would, um, it would help people. I think people would stop being so like would stop being so stressed about gaming and and having a 100% perfect account like it doesn't matter it doesn't matter and if people are telling you oh you're dumb for playing that game because you can't get the online trophies I mean you're dumb for those, those people are dumb for saying you're dumb because you can't get a few notifications like whatever dude play the game that you want to play that you enjoy and have fun with it and who cares if you can't get the online done you know Maybe someday they'll open the servers back up. We never know, but, um, you know, it is what it is. The example I wanted to point out was um, actually Madden 10. I played this game back in 2012, and the servers were shut down for it already, and I couldn't get any of the online stuff done. So what did I do? I did all of the single-player stuff, and I left it as it was. So, yeah, I, I don't see a problem with it. I, I actually really like the idea of that. And, and I do plan on doing it with, like I said, the Tiger Woods franchise on the PS3 because I love those games. Those games are what got me into golf. Those games are what kind of also got me into video gaming on consoles. And and, and I think that it doesn't really matter. Dude. They're, just a, they're just a few notifications. And if you can't get the platinum, but you're getting everything else in the game, that that that's fine. It's perfectly fine. All right. Next up, we have Cats. Cats is leaving a comment. Holy cow. Um, unrelated, but thoughts on macros, like shit where people use remote play on their computer to keep inputting a string of commands over and over again to cheese fighting game combos or rhythm games or shit like that. Because I feel like that's cheating since it requires software outside the game. So yes, I, I would agree with that. Um, it, It's kind of the same thing as... Um, people earning trophies for you, except in this case, instead of a person earning a trophy for you, you have a machine earning a trophy for you. So I do agree that it, it's a little bit cheesy to do. Now, in regards to people earning trophies for you compared to outside macros earning trophies for you, yes, the machine is earning the trophy for you, but there is some effort that you have to put in to like set it up and make it work. Compared to if you have someone else doing it for you, they're literally doing it for you and you're not doing anything. So I don't think it's, I don't, I wouldn't say it's um, acceptable, but I wouldn't say it's 100% like unacceptable. Like if someone was to say that, like for instance, there, there's a few examples of this. There's a Final Fantasy game that has that, you said rhythm games. There's, um, there's things that you can buy for rock band games to basically do all the drum things in it for you. You don't have to do any of the drums. It'll do it for you because there's a device that Rock Band made that you can play a real drum set. You can set a real drum set up to correlate to the game and you just play the drum part or you download a drum track of the song and you basically play it through that machine. So um, there are like some cheesy things with that. But again, doing that stuff, you know, it's easy to say that you had a macro do it for you, but it's, it's the steps that kind of take you to set that up that it uh you have to put some effort in right but again i wouldn't say it's acceptable but if someone was to tell me they did it i don't think i would look at them the same way that if they said that they paid somebody to do it for them i think if someone said they paid someone to get that trophy for them compared to they set a macro up to do it for them i think i'd have a little more respect for the person that set the macro up because at least they took the initiative into their hands to do it on their own instead of shipping it off to someone else. Um, but yeah, I, I would say, yes, it's cheating because again, it comes down to the whole thing. It's your trophy list. It shows what you're able to do. And if you're physically not able to do it and you need to download a program to play the game for you, then I don't know if you 100% deserve that trophy. Actually, you don't 100% deserve that trophy. 
Let's be honest. Um, up next we have Micro Sam. I'm happy with the Need for Speed Hot Pursuit um remaster with all the DLC because it's from Criterion. You had hours of fun with Need for Speed Hot Pursuit on the 360 and Need for Speed Most Wanted on the PS3, Burnout 3 Takedown on the PS2, and Burnout Revenge on the PS2. Yeah, I mean, uh, any, so um, in regards to remastering games with Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, I think that actually got released this week or next week. I'm not sure. I, th I thought it was this week. Um, I, I haven't really been paying attention. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't mind that there's a remaster. I would actually like for them to remaster all the PS3 games to PS4 or to PS5. Um, I like the idea, especially like you said, the Criterion games are, you know, phenomenal. The Burnout games, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, Need for Speed Most Wanted, they're all phenomenal games. And the main reason that they're phenomenal is because they're actually fun to play. And when I say fun to play, I mean like the physics are actually enjoyable that's like my biggest complaint with the new Need for Speed games is the physics feel like you're driving on ice and on rails, and it's it's just awful. It's just so bad. It's not realistic. I understand that they're supposed to be arcade games, but come on. We can't have a little bit of realism. Like, you're literally driving. Like, the whole road is ice. W what is happening right now? Like, come on. Um, And I was so hyped when Need for Speed 2015 was coming back out or they were doing like that reboot. And I was like, oh, they're adding customization. This looks fucking fantastic. And then they showed the first gameplay and I was like, what is this? What are, what are these physics? What is this camera angle? What is going on right now? But yeah, um, I, I do like the remaster of Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. I would say any of the PS3 games, any of the Need for Speed PS3 games, that would be in my top three to get remastered. That to get remastered, Need for Speed Most Wanted to get remastered, even though that would probably be like number three. Honestly, Hot Pursuit would probably be my number one choice to get remastered on the PS3. Um, and then maybe maybe Shift or Shift 2, one of the two of them, because I feel like those games are a little underrated, I and I do want to play those soon. Um, But yeah, I, one thing at the end of, your, end of your comment here, Sam, that I do want to hit on is um, Burnout. Where are the Burnout remasters? Come on, man. You you remastered Burnout Paradise from the PS3 to the PS4. Can we just get a nice little Burnout, you know, collection on the PS4 or PS5 from all the PS2 ones? Like Burnout, Burnout 2, Burnout 3, Burnout... Re Can we just get a little, like, just a little nibble, like, something like that? Come on, just use the same engine that you used for Burnout Paradise and literally remake those games. I, I don't think it can be that hard. Could be wrong, but I don't think it would be that hard. But that would be that that would be a dream of mine to get those old burnout games remastered to new consoles. That's a remaster that I would love to see. Um, and then Christopher um with another question, last question of the uh the day. What are your thoughts on the new PlayStation app update that we had on uh, 102920? Only thing I'm not happy with is losing your wish list. So I actually wasn't aware of this update. Um, I have automatic updates on my phone for all my apps, but it didn't do it for the PlayStation app. So I actually did download it. I'm going to open it up right now. I did download it and uh, look through it. Um, I don't mind the new layout. I mean, the new layout's definitely cool. It, it shows what people are playing, which is really nice. It shows what, you know, what you've recently played. They have a new platinum image, but it's just for the games, not for your profile, which I don't really get that. If you're going to do a new platinum image, can we make it consistent throughout everything and not just, not just one thing? Um, but yeah, I mean, the store on the, the store on the phone works good. Um, the new store on the web browser is dog shit. Um, I tried to hop on it tonight and it, it's just, it's so ass. You can't see prices of anything. You can't add anything to your cart. It, it, it's complete dog shit. But um, yeah, I do like the new layout. I think it's very, um, it's minimal and, but it's functional and it's got a lot of information. You're able to see, you know, uh, all your messages, you know, any parties that people are in. You're able to see your friends list. So um, what friends are playing. It has everything. It has everything that you would want. I mean, that's just what it comes down to. Um, but yeah, that's my comments on the new PlayStation app. But the web browser is dog shit. Um, 
So that's going to wrap up the questions from uh, last week's trophy talk. Like I said, if you guys do have any questions or comments or any topics that you want me to talk about, uh, please uh, feel free to leave those down in the comments below and I will um, get back to them in the next trophy talk. Why, why did I just have a brain fart? I don't know. So there's one more thing that I do want to, um, I do want to discuss. I haven't I haven't talked about this with the other people yet, but I do want to kind of um I do want to put it out there and I want to kind of start getting some traction on this. So I will or I am going to be starting a podcast, hopefully a weekly podcast with um Brian and Waves. And it's gonna be the three of us, and we will we may have, you know. A rotating fourth or something um but it's gonna we're gonna try to stick to the, the core three of us every week um and it's gonna be we're gonna try our best to release it every single wednesday um day evening night sometime we're gonna try to we're gonna try to release it then so i am going to leave a link to the uh youtube page and i will leave a link to the twitter um it's Twitter as well. So if you want to go follow either one of those and subscribe, please do. Um, I can't put it as like a featured channel on my channel because it has no videos yet because YouTube is stupid like that. But I should be able to link it down in the description below of this video. So like I said, if you're interested in that, it's going to be a weekly, maybe, you know, bi-weekly depending on what our schedule is. Um, we're going to try to do weekly um, just a little discussion, be like an hour or two long. We'll just talk about trophies, games, basically what's going on here, except it'll be a little more of a conversation rather than me um, just staring at my wall and talking to myself. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to go follow any of that stuff or subscribe, please do. Um, and we will try to get that out. We're, we're trying to get the first episode of that out um, possibly next week or the week after. I'm not 100% sure, but we, we definitely want to get it started uh, before December. So. We have most of the graphics and stuff made. Uh, it's just, you know, figuring out some things behind the scenes coming up next. Another thing, I mean, kind of random, but I, I changed all my, <laughs> I changed all my logos and everything again. Um, I had someone do them, wasn't really, uh, wasn't really thrilled with them. So I did them on my own. So that's pretty cool. But uh, <laughs> I've been changing them around on the discord server and everything. So if you guys have seen them changing, you're not going crazy. I've been changing them, but I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm sticking with what I have now. So we'll leave it there. Um, but anyway, that is the, the, the discussion. That's the trophy talk again for the week of November 1st, 2020. That's the games I've been playing. That's the games I plan on playing. If you guys are interested in any of it, you can go look at my PSN profiles and kind of get updates on when I'm playing games, um, which is kind of nice. There's all links to that stuff down below. There's So there's my PSN profiles, Twitter, Twitch, all of that. So if you want to go follow me on any, any of that stuff, that's all linked down in the description below. There is a link to the Discord server down in the description below as well. So if you want to go join that, um, you know, we talk over there every once in a while. Maybe for this podcast or something, we may do like an open Discord night or something where people can just kind of come in and... Um, you know, have discussions as well. Possibly. I don't know. Just throwing ideas out there right now. Um, but yeah, if you guys did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like, like I said earlier, if you have any questions, comments, topics that you want me to discuss in the next trophy talk, do leave that down in the comments below. And I will definitely be sure to cover them in next week's trophy talk. Like I said, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like, if you've made it this far and you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing for more trophy content like this. And I hope to see you all around sometime soon.